But when I was 28 years old, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure or hypertension um, at a very early young a young age. And um, that was purely, uh, you know, due to uh, hereditary uh, reasons. And after that, yes, um, I was pregnant when I was 32 and my hypertension just skyrocketed. And it basically created some um, heart condition that I had no idea um, was happening at the moment. Fast forward to the day of my NDE, um, a friend and I decided we were going to have a small hike up a mountain, took a, a picnic basket and a blanket and set up under a tree and we had a beautiful uh, picnic that morning. So we're sitting on the blanket and she starts with her crazy talk again, uh, the crazy talk. And she starts saying, you know, uh, Rochelle, you know, I, Source has sent me uh, to, to tell you a few things. And obviously, I didn't believe her. And she kept on speaking about it. As she was speaking, I saw that the picnic area started to fill up with a lot of people. And I said to her, wow, it's getting really busy and noisy. I wish some of these people could just leave and so it can be a bit quiet. And she said, oh, no problem. I could do that. And obviously, I thought, there's no way she's going to be doing that. And I closed my eyes for a second. And lo and behold, when I opened my eyes, there was nobody in the picnic area, which I found absolutely bizarre. So my heart starts pounding. My heart is racing. And there was something inside me that believed her. Um, and I thought, OK, you know, maybe it's just some heart palpitations. Um, I'm going to blow it off. And I closed my eyes and she let me sleep a little bit. And the next thing I know, there was no popping sound or popping feeling. I, it felt like I sat up from my lying position and I looked around. Everything looked the same at the picnic area, but there was almost a glitch in the sky. And I couldn't understand what this glitch was. And um, so I sat up. And I looked, um, when I looked next to me, my friend was no longer there. And I knew something had happened to me. And I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, what happened? Where am I? Like, am, am I dreaming? Or, you know, I was lying on the, on the blanket. And I thought this must be a dream. And I sat up and I looked and I saw this glitch. And it's almost like if you take two pieces of a screen and you fit it together, it's just out of place. Like the one frame does not fit the next frame. And everything just had a glitch. And I found that, you know, really weird. Something, it's almost like um, a feeling that came to me and said, well, you're no longer on earth. It was kind of a feeling. And I thought, if I'm not on earth, then where, where am I? And as I had these questions inside of me, um, I started feeling a pulling. It's almost like something started pulling um, or tugging at me and taking me somewhere, but it was more my soul and not physical. Well, at this point, I was still physical. I had a body. I was looking at this glitch in the sky, um, but I felt this tugging and I felt this pulling. And then when I let go and I just get, like gave into this pulling feeling, I found myself in a void. It was a complete void. And then I automatically knew that I, I had left my body. Um, in this void, and I wasn't there for very long, um, where three beings came to me and they said, Rochelle, I need to, well, this is all telepathic. They said, Rochelle, I need to show you a few things. Um, mind you, Jeff, before this, I was probably agnostic. I, I knew I believed in something, but um, I didn't know about Source. And these three beings of lights, they also had a human shape, um, not male or female, just made of lights. And they said, okay, I have some, you know, I need to take you somewhere and show you something. I went with them. Uh, the first instance, they put me in a scenario where I was laying on a hospital bed and my friends and family was around me. I must have been the same age. And they said to me, you need to say goodbye to your family now. So when I was lying on the hospital bed, this is the one scenario, um, I was lying in the hospital bed and I started, you know, out of body, just I, I watched my body on the hospital bed. And then I went around 
to each person in the room to say goodbye and whispering in the ear that I love them. Um, at this point, my daughter was six years old. So I went to her and I whispered in her ear that I loved her very, very much and I'll see her soon. Um, and then I don't know what happened, but the next instant I was literally at source. It was just bright light and love and everybody that passed was there. Um, my brother-in-law was also there and it was complete bliss. It was just something um, undescribable. It's something that you cannot explain to someone. There's no, like they said, a lot of people say there's no words. There is no words to describe source. The second scenario, they asked me, um, I need to show you something more. So while I'm at the source, they asked me, do I want to stay there or do I want to see my daughter again? And I, and I said, no, I definitely want to go back down to my daughter. And before I got to um, into my body, they put me through a second scenario. So the first scenario was acknowledging that I had died. The second scenario was now that you now that you understand about death, um, you need to understand how to protect yourself because not everything is, you know, um, roses down up in earth. And so what they did was they showed me in order to protect yourself, you need to take that source light, you know, fold it down into the center or your third chakra and keep it there. And this is how you deal with negative entities. You take that source and you just build it up inside of you. Once I knew how to do that, um, I then popped down back into Earth, but I didn't go directly into Earth. It was now back into the dimension with the glitch. And as I understood this dimension, I slowly filtered back into the third dimension. Um, when I got there, when I got to the third dimension, back into my body, um, my friend was next to me. Um, she was probably, you know, crying, sitting over me. I could see those tears running down her cheek. And she said, where have you been? You you weren't breathing. And though I had the weirdest reaction, I actually started laughing and I was, I was so, so happy. And I said, oh my gosh, you know, I need to tell you something. I need to tell you something. And I said, I know I died. And I just, you know, brushed it off. And I said, no, let's, don't worry about me dying. It's fine. I need to tell you something. And um, she was absolutely broken. Um, so I tried to explain to her what happened, but that didn't happen. Um, yeah, so we packed up and I knew that, you know, she wanted to take me to the hospital, which I refused because I felt so alive. I felt so fantastic. I felt like I was just like rejuvenated. Um, so we ended up not going to hospital that day. Um, we did go the next day, however. So yeah, that was my NDE.